Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John. This is Video True Nerd, and welcome back to Crusader Kings 2, where the glorious reign of King Iliad uh, hasn't quite been so glorious as perhaps I was hoping for. I thought our beautiful, wonderful Golden Age was about to begin. It hasn't so much, because it turns out, yes, all of the peace that King John set up, and bloody hell, I was not expecting the beginning of King John's reign to be looking back at him and thinking, oh, I miss those wonderful days. All those wonderful alliances he actually managed to set up. Unfortunately, Iliad being on the other side of the dynasty means none of that seems to actually count for anything anymore. So it's fair game between me and England now, and some of England's vassal counts are starting to look at me with uh, interest. Though I'm not sure any of them on the border states over here have actually got the strength to back up their desires, but they are fabricating claims against my Welsh holdings. We can hold... Uh, but we need to be very, very careful. We need to invest, and that's exactly what I am doing, because let's count off the good things here. I've got myself quite the booming economy here, plus 17.8 per month. I have got prospering and thriving and all the rest of it on pretty much all of my territory on this side of the channel. And actually, we've got a fair bit of prospering going on over here as well. So money is in good shape. Though actually, all that prospering basically means, yeah, if a disease does sweep in... Oh, bloody hell, look at England. England's all prospering as well. Oh, flipping heck. Right. Well, that's just asking for a smallpox epidemic. But that's fine, because I'm also trying to upgrade my hospital, damn it. There we go, upgrading the hospital. Yeah, you see, this is all 100% fine. We're going to keep Cornwall safe. I've got a competent leader. We are building up our forces right now. Yeah, that's the highest the army's ever been at 5,000 from my actual troops there. That is not so bad at all. 10 on diplomacy, 10 on martial, 13 on stewardship, and a very competent wife as well. These two together, quite the power couple. And they've just had their first son, Prince Achilleus. Now, I need to figure out who to get him betrothed to. Because, yeah, a non-aggression pact and then potentially an alliance coming out of that non-aggression pact. That's what I could do with right now. And I do have half an eye on Denmark. Though interesting, there is a countess up for grabs right now. This countess is currently a child uh, and, yeah, reports into the King of Italy. And the actual, yeah, the heir itself is marked as primogeniture. So if I was to uh, marry her... And then she were to have children, then those children would inherit, but those children would be reporting into a king level figure. Also, the cleansing flame! Bloody hell, that's one hell of a title, especially for a child who's terrible at everything. Well, apparently he crushed a revolt, so I'm guessing that's how he got the title. Whoever does his PR, though, I want them to work for us, because that's pretty impressive. He's six years old, he put down one revolt, and all of a sudden he's the cleansing flame of Italy. Me? I haven't got a name at all. I'm just flipping King Iliad. I've got no epithet whatsoever. Now, the other problem I've got is the Second Crusade has not gone as well as the first. Not the first one that well. We technically won it, but then England immediately lost everything. And yeah, the Second Crusade right now is just being pretty much torn apart. Piece by piece. In fact, what even happened to... Where'd my person go? I swear I had an army still here. Is this you over there? Yep, okay. So, they're... They're just marching home, are they? Yeah, okay. So, right now, the Cornish army is just marching home. So, don't do that. Instead... Oh, Howl. It's Howl all by himself. Oh, you poor bastard. Right, well... Um... Go and join up with any of the Crusaders that are left, please, Howl. I'm going to be honest. You are at this point, yes, 65 and possessed by Satan. And also, you know, multiple other bad traits and you're deceitful. It's probably best you just head back to the Holy Land and die there. That's probably for the best, yes. So right now, Crusaders at minus 39%. So, not so great. At this exact moment in time, a lot of defeats recently. We did win some victories at the beginning, just... Yeah, we got split up. And we didn't actually bother to... Oh! Right, well, there's another English army being absolutely flipping destroyed. This crusade's got to be as good as over. Though I'm not quite sure how they're going to end it. Because presumably he's going to have to... Yeah, counterattack. Somewhere. Wait, could he come and counterattack? I really hope he's not going to come and counterattack me. But England does seem to be rather 
just pouring more and more troops straight into the Holy Land, uh, still thinking that he can win. Like, yeah, the actual King of England, his actual amount of troops you could call up just fell from 7,000 to 3,400-ish. Almost certainly, because he just keeps throwing them away. And I'm hoping that's going to have some very, very bad consequences for him sooner or later. I mean, presumably there's only so long his own vassals are willing to just stand there and let him throw away men's lives into a war that he's not going to win. Right? And yes, indeed. Previously, this guy was loved by all his vassals. All of a sudden, it does rather look like, yes, his own little vassals and uh, the Duchess of East Anglia and the Duke of Essex. Not keen. Not keen at all. Also, Hal was attacked in Ansira and now seems to have gone slightly missing. Though apparently he's not dead. Do we know where he... Right, I think the last actual member of the army disappeared, so he's just teleported back here. Fascinating. Though on the plus side, he has picked up Crusader, so that's good, I guess. And one of Havoc's children, Drew, needs some education on her. Alright, she's looking not so bad, and those are mostly decent traits. What do we have here? Ah, it's a bit of a mixed bag, unfortunately, but she seems to have some natural aptitude for intrigue. Let's get her over in that direction, see if we can have a new spy master, potentially. Because, yeah, now that we've actually lost Clarence II, and Alan's on his way out sooner or later. And as the war wages on down in the Middle East, doing not so much good at all, I've got myself a plan. Which is, there's one thing that I think King Iliad learnt from the reign of King John, which is piety is all well and good, but epidemics are constantly around the corner. Technology, medicine, science, learning. That is his watchword. And this man is intelligent. Intelligent enough that I think it's finally time to have a little look -see at societies. We haven't really looked at this shit. I was going to look at this at King John, but he wasn't actually smart enough to join the one I wanted. So societies are basically orders you can join where you can level up within the ranks in order to unlock new abilities with them. Two of them are specifically religious, so the Benedictine Order and these other lads here. And I don't really like these ones so much because they basically lower your fertility 15%. Not so bad for old guys, but I want to get out as many children as possible. So I wasn't really interested in that because I just desperately needed more and more children. And they kind of give your character almost like support abilities. They let you support other people in your faction better. So providing spiritual guidance to a landed character within your realm. And then there's also, you know, at the bottom, Lucifer's Own. We probably want to stay out of Lucifer's Own for now. Maybe one day we'll have a king that suits Lucifer's Own. Just for the minute, probably best. We don't actually serve Lucifer. Probably going to end badly. But here's the one I like. This is the one I like right flipping here. You're not allowed to join unless you've actually got learning of 10, which King Iliad actually does. And this one is all about science. Science and medicine and learning. 12th century science and medicine and learning, so there's a bit of quackery thrown in there as well, but they're trying, damn it. They're trying. The downside is this does actually mean the temples like me a lot less, so my chance of getting the tax from the temples will go down, but I think it's going to be worth it. I want to join a society just to see what they do, because I've never joined one before, so I'm not quite sure what they do. You can see like what the abilities are going to be. Apart from Lucifer's own, that's a bit of a mystery. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, my starting point is I get to write a theorem paper, which, if it turns to be good, grants me a special perk, which I can then actually, like, trade in down the line by actually brewing a special potion and then just giving it to someone in my faction who's suffering from depression or stress, and that will just solve it, which is interesting. I suspect there might be a bit of placebo effect going on. So, you know what? I am going to join the Hermetic Society. Huzzah for me. Greetings, King Iliad. We're delighted to learn you have taken your first steps towards enlightenment. The secrets of the corpus may be obscured to you for now, but in time you may come to understand them as I have. Hold in thy mind all thou wouldst know, and Hermes, the thrice blessed, will teach thee. Signed, the Magus, i.e. the highest level person within the society. This is what I desire to hear. So now I am up to level one. And my esoteric knowledge is currently zero. Interesting. So I'm actually gaining that as if it was like uh, piety or prestige or something like that. So that's just going on over time. 
and it's going up a bit faster thanks to the fact that I'm erudite, marvellous, and my learning ability is also increasing that. So if I could further increase my learning, that'd be great. However, I can also write a theorem paper if that's what I want to. Can I just do that? I kind of want to write a theorem paper. Boo, I can't! And yes, indeed, I need to actually store up 750 knowledge points with these bastards before I can actually level myself up and gain some more abilities. Ah, officially it's a decision. Okay, is it showing up over here in that case? Yes, indeed, acquire ingredients and write a theorem paper have just shown up right here. Fascinating. So do research and then write a theorem paper on a topic before sending it out for peer review. Should it be accepted by at least three out of five peers, you will gain a reward. Okay, so I can just begin writing this. I don't see any reason not to, quite frankly. So I face the daunting task of researching and writing an entire theorem paper to be reviewed by my peers. To have it be accepted by the order would be a great boon to me, but if the quality is found to be lacking, it might be a big blow to my prestige. Okay, so I can make a decent effort, which is low risk, but potentially means the paper would be worse. Or I could make a ridiculously extraordinary effort and, oh blimey, right, that's, that's quite a lot of money. That is quite a lot of money right there. And my stewardship will go down and I might actually become stressed, but it's only a 10% chance. Ooh. Ooh, um, okay, right, I've neither time or the resources to make an extraordinary effort, and I'll rely on my intelligence rather than on hard work. You know what, screw it, let's give it a go, boom, I've just spent a lot of money, and hopefully I don't immediately become stressed, no, instead this guy is just helping me out and just making everyone like me, beautiful, what, wait, hang on, Bishop Talent. You were supposed to be speaking to the Duke, just speak to the bloody Duke of Mercia. Ah yes, a little baby brimstone also needs a childhood focus. Nothing too special going on here to be honest, let's just put you over to thriftiness, lovely. So for the next year, my stewardship has indeed been artificially lowered, but it seems to be still decent at, yeah, 8. Though my personal domain, yeah, has gone down from 9. To eight and the sick house has been built in Cornwall. Beautiful. Now, what does that potentially unlock? Not that I can afford it, but what have you? Disease resistance plus ten percent if I expand that for out seven hundred bloody gold. Dear oh flipping dear. Right, leper colony. That's a lot cheaper. Alternatively, a bunch of these can actually provide me with bonus piety and temple vassal opinion up. Interesting. The translation house can give me economic technology points, because apparently we need to build the translation house and the inn and the library inside the hospital. So this doesn't really feel like a hospital, more like just like a generic learning centre. But yes indeed, I can see the advantage of maybe putting another 400 gold into leper colony number one, basically just setting up a quarantine zone. We'll see though, because I most definitely want to be floating enough money, oh dear. Right, Agnes, what's wrong with you at this point? Oh, it's just flu. It's fine, that's not so bad, but she's publicly humiliated. Why was she publicly humiliated? Did Oh, well, I suppose technically I did do the whole having sex with my cousin thing, which I didn't actually tell King Ilian to do. He just kind of made that decision by himself. Uh, yeah, bedridden right now, which unfortunately gets her fertility right down. Okay, and also attraction opinion. <laughs> Yeah, can't really uh, blame Iliad for not being desperately interested right now. But that doesn't mean he should go and see his flipping cousin again. Call the physician. The physician should be strong enough to sort that out. The physician is extremely well learned. And thankfully, the consumption I saw floating around over here in France and the Holy Roman Empire seems to have burnt itself out before ever spreading to England. So, we've actually had quite a long period without a major disease. Works for me, quite frankly. Oh, and better and better, my court physician is now officially a renowned physician. So, well done. Does that actually give you bonus to... Yeah, that actually gives you some bonus to your learning. So now he's even flipping better. Very, very nice indeed. I like this guy. This guy is good. And it would appear that he's actually managed to sort out my wife's sniffles as well. Absolutely marvellous. So as a result of that, yep, we can get back to getting out some children. And I believe the eldest of the Hellspawn children has actually just managed to come of age there. So, Sulfur, let's see, how did your childhood go? Aha! 
Your childhood actually went pretty well. Rowdy and willful. Sulfur, you my good man, could potentially be very, very good. That's not a terrible starting point for someone who's currently 12. And yes indeed, I believe for pretty much the rest of this year, I'm focusing on my extremely expensive paper that I'm writing. But we should get that money back pretty quickly. But yes, stick to the golden rule here. Seriously, let's just actually focus on storing money and always floating enough for mercenaries. And in fact, I managed to finish a few months early. Marvellous. So it is finished. I have produced an excellent paper on a hieroglyphic translation, exploring the hidden meaning in these ancient texts, which might in theory provide new insights. Ooh. Now all that's left is to submit it to my peers for review. And who are these people? Ah, just various people who are themselves higher up in the order. So I will send it out at once, or you destroy the paper, this failure shall never see the light of day. No. Send it out. I just need, I think, the majority of them to think it's good. So send it out and, ooh. But these are actual people on the map. So potentially if they like me, they're more likely to actually say yes. So I suppose if I were a major king in the world, I'd actually need to uh, keep that in mind. Uh, Barracks have been built. Good. And how are you doing? There you go. That's what you were supposed to be doing all along. Make the flipping Duke of Mercia like me. And we're also getting ourselves, yeah, some bonus technology off Constantinople. Beautiful. And I've decided to endorse your work. Okay. I've actually got myself one person on side right now. And I've decided to endorse it as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, flipping yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, everybody loves this work. Everybody flipping loves it. I've decided to endorse it as well. Thank you. I wonder how many points of knowledge this gets me. I don't know, but I kind of want to know. Well, that's five already. So this is all just going marvellously well so far. And has my... Yes, indeed. My stewardship has gone back up, even though it hasn't actually hit December... Uh, 11.30 yet, purely because I've already finished the paper. So we've gone back to normal. Beautiful. And there we go. Enough people have backed the paper. It's been accepted into the library. And thus my standing has gone up significantly. I gain, so 100 knowledge and 75 prestige. And, oh, as a result for the next, what's that, the next five years, uh, I gain learning plus two, which directly converts into more technology points coming through. Oh, yes. I am clever, as it turns out, boom. But it is not, sadly, a permanent perk. Still, it certainly never hurts to have more technology coming in. If nothing else, I'm actually ready to make some improvements here. So, get Vassal Opinion up, get City Vassal Opinion up, get Temple Vassal Opinion up. Majesty, what does that do? Ah, the short reign business goes down. And Piety and Prestige gain goes up, that's certainly of interest. Tolerance, I can't quite afford to yet. Now, significant status of women, what would that do? Would that be women are allowed to have, ah, Chancellor and Steward. Interesting. Okay, I could certainly see the advantage of that. Alternatively, I could get Legalism up to four, but that doesn't actually do anything. Legalism five, however, gives me a whole bunch of new options for, yeah, actually shifting the tax burdens around a bit more. Or I could just go for Majesty for more Piety and Prestige. Okay, what else unlocks as time goes by? Imperial administration. Alright, interesting. You know what, I'm just going to take Majesty 3. There we go. And as for the economic business, Improved Keeps does nothing but just basically gives me, yeah, a little bit more in the way of fortifications. I've barely been upgrading them, so that's not worth it. Trade practices. My trade value goes up and I unlock a new port. Or I could save up for construction. For a whole bunch of new stuff here. Interesting. Or I could just save up for castle infrastructure and get castle taxes up. And that would also unlock a whole bunch of new buildings related to barracks and whatever. Yeah, I might just save up for that. Also, why don't I have a steward right now? I feel like I should have a steward right now. How long have I not had a steward? Who died? I think somebody died. You know, annoyingly, no one stands out as being spectacular. My court physician is not even that bad at this sort of thing, but it's not really his specialisation. I feel like we might just be able to invite someone better in to handle this. Oh, wait, hang on. I know exactly what happened. I tossed the old guy in the... Yeah, there he is. 
Oh, Beaumondo, how could you do this to me? Right, do you have any claims of any description? No, you do not. Right, Beaumondo, time for you to go. And I'm going to be honest, I've been keeping you safe for quite some time from people from back home who have been actually trying to kill you. So, you know, just FYI, good luck on your own. I'm not sure you're going to do that well. If I banish you, I will seize 11 gold. Yeah, go on, get out of here. Right, that'd be why I don't actually have myself an actual uh, steward. It's because I threw the old one in prison. Right, let's go find a new steward, because I need someone who's like, you know, good. You know, rather weirdly, a couple of actually fairly high up people have shown up, including two princes. Okay, this is fascinating. This guy is willing to actually move to my court and has... 10 bajillion strong claims. Okay. Well, this is of interest. So he right now works for the King of Hungary. Possibly Hungary got over its whole revolt situation. But you'd actually be willing to move into my court and bring your children with you, of course, who are planning to inherit all of these titles, who I could force to marry into my family in diddly diddly day. Okay. Well, this is all fascinating. And there's also a Prince of Italy here as well. Who is, yes indeed, one of the sons of the old dead King of Italy. And he's got... Oh, bloody hell, he's got a lot of siblings. Right. The King of Italy got around, potentially. And you do come with a strong claim on the Kingdom of Italy. <laughs> Which is uh, of interest. Honestly, I'm not sure I actually need a strong claim on the Kingdom of Italy. But, you know, it's always... It's always nice to have. You know what? Maybe I should just focus on someone who's good at the actual job I want them to do. Which is weirdly you. Like... You're actually the best person for the job, but you're just a prince of Italy, but apparently you're willing to just show up and, you know, be my accountant. Well, I guess I should say yes then. So, Prince Antonio, welcome your majesty. Welcome to Cornwall. Um, the paperwork's over there. Feel free to just, like, get on with it. And, oh bloody hell, what exactly has my wife decided to try and do now? Kill useless. Right, why do you want to kill Useless precisely? Useless is my cousin who- Oh! Right, well, yeah. Yeah, she was the cousin who I decided to have sex with at some mysterious point that we never saw. That was very odd indeed. I can understand why you'd want her dead. To be honest, I kind of want her still around. Because she's very good at producing children. That's I should not bring that up right now, given one of them's mine. But she is. That's why I want to keep... Not my children. Someone else's children. Regardless, stop it. Stop trying to kill her. Oh, and this is fun. Now I'm part of the order. It's not just my papers that are being reviewed by other people. I need to review other people's papers myself. So, where are you from exactly? Ah, you are from Glamorgan. Interesting, you're a local. Reading through it, it's apparent it was a solidly average effort, nothing more. Do I see fit to endorse it? Okay, I can either endorse it or I can say no. I'm sorry if it's not actually that good. I mean, my paper was genuinely good. That's the thing. So, I'm not really worried about you doing anything in response, given you are actually, yeah, intrigue zero. So, no. It shall not have my blessing. Go away. And I feel like this message from my wife can only reasonably be read with a massively sarcastic accent. Dear husband, your wisdom and mercy are legendary. Your demand is just. My scheming was obviously misdirected. I hope you'll find it in you to forgive me. Okay. Yeah, I understand why she wants to murder useless. Like, honestly, I don't know what was going on there. I was probably drunk at the time. You know what? I'm going to send her just a little gift. I'm just going to send her... 15 gold to increase her opinion of me. Because I'm hoping that means, yeah, she does love me. Despite the fact that I did decide to shag my cousin at one point, she does love me. That only, like, you know, affects a little bit. And apparently that runs out. <laughs> that just runs out down the line. But I've also sent some money, which has more than double the impact of, you know, love. And the Duke of Mercia is coming round to me. Good. Good, 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 good. And what exactly is going on here? Ultontak of... Wait, what? What is... What is any of this? Right, so this guy took this county at the very south of Ireland off... You. Right. 
Who are you exactly? And why did you have that in the first place? I'm guessing she's just part of the Glamorgan court and went out and either got or potentially just inherited through marriage or, well, inheritance, this particular earldom, and now she's lost it. Which I get told in an alert because technically she now returns to a court that is mine and will hopefully at some point become even more mine because can you just drop dead? Like, do you have any idea how many people in my family I've wanted to survive have just dropped at the age of 30 or 40 from random disease? You, the one guy I want to die, obviously you're going to hold on to your 120. And also, the son of the guy I kicked out of Brittany has just shown up at the court. And he hates me, and he's a tough soldier who's also dull, lazy, ambitious, and gluttonous. So, can we just, like, maybe get rid of this guy. Let's just- oh, we've got problems. Let's just get rid of this guy. Just- just go away. Please leave. Bye. Uh, right, so he's gone away now. Worrying reports have reached me about my marshal. It seems he's been using soldiers to extort money. Right, you. The husband of Margaret, who is definitely starting to get on a bit. Okay. You are good at your job. And you're attractive, apparently. How many of your children actually inherited that? Did any of them even manage to get it? Because I'm not sure any of them did, or at least none of the survivors did. Uh, you did not, and you did not either. No. Fine. I think it's time for him to go. That is unacceptable. And unfortunately, Cornwall picks up peasant unrest regardless. Right. He's going in prison. So, let's just actually... Oh, he's forfeited his office. Can we don't actually put him in prison. I feel like we should put him in prison. Oh, no, we can put him in prison. Yeah, let's put him in prison. So, he's now locked away in the dungeon. Marvellous. So, we'll just be dealing with him in time. First, of course, actually do need a new marshal. And needs to be... Not how... I sent you to the Holy Land to die, damn it. You know what? I've got some promising kids coming through. I'm not going to go inviting more people to the realm right now. Just as a bit of a holding pattern, it can be Howl. He's not going to be around for too much longer anyway, quite frankly. So he can just chill out. Oh, Bly, you're supposed to be boosting taxes, you stupid bastard. And you train some... Actually, no, before we do that, uh, back off over here. Is the revolt risk... The revolt risk is not insignificant. Right, you... Suppress revolts, please. Get on with that over there. And now that I'm pretty confident that Mercia likes me, time to start being a bit more sneaky. Because the King of England and his vassals, they don't all get on that well. He's got a few problems, in particular with East Anglia. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to instruct my Chancellor to start sowing some dissents. There's only a 4% chance he'll be discovered, and a 32% chance he'll actually pull this off. Deploy him directly into Middlesex. Let's see if we can get England to start having some trouble. Though actually, while I'm thinking about it, what about... Ooh. Well, this is intriguing too. I mean, I have been worried about Mercia for some time. Potentially, the best way to deal with Mercia would be to encourage them to break up. That could be very much of interest. Right, you, I think I can move you later. Yeah, I can move you in October. Remember to move him, but that could be very, very much of interest. Now, over to the prison. Gurgly, we've had a lot of trouble with you over the years. I could banish you and take- oh! You are apparently holding 172 gold, which is presumably all of that stupid gold that you've actually been embezzling off the people of Cornwall. Right, well that does make a lot of sense, yes. You've got, well you've got a weak claim but it's not on me, and your intrigue is not high. You know what, I'm going to banish him and take the money. Boom, nice. So he's just naffed off to somewhere way over there. We've also got a large merchant caravan from distant lands. Uh, their leader, a jovial man of massive girth. Oh, he to to King John. Pleads with you in a strange accent to grant them shelter from the elements. And, okay. They spend a night within the walls. This could be an assassination attempt. I'm going to let them in. 
I'm probably going to regret that, but I'm going to trust that we're okay. So the fat merchant sits by the fire and regales you and the rest of the court with stories of his travels. His appetite seems insatiable, but you do not wish to prove a poor host. You order your servants to bring in a second serving. That doesn't cost me any money, though. So tell me more about your travels, you magnificent bastard. And... Hang on, he insists on leaving a gift as thanks for your great hospitality. This eunuch will serve you Oh, I think I need a eunuch. Like, in terms of just, um... Yeah, there's like a minor title, just court eunuch. I'm not sure what it really does, to be honest, but apparently it just gives me a bunch of free prestige. So this is actually quite useful. Uh, let's see what else he's... Ooh, he's actually pretty good. Uh, he is a eunuch, yes, that's certainly true. So he can't do much in the way of having children, but he is... Uh, a shrewd architect, diligent, temperate, and humble. He could actually be a decent educator, potentially. Hmm, interesting. Uh, right, you know what? We will definitely have him. So that's absolutely lovely. So there we go. And in addition, I've got even more tech points coming in off Alan, who must be getting really on at this point. And you, my good man, are going to be the court eunuch. There we flipping go. And understandably, he doesn't actually want a wife. How old are you, by the way, my good man? You're 22, fine. So you'll actually be around for quite a while. Although, hang on, was that plus 0.75 prestige for me or for him? I suspect it might have been for him, actually. Also, the Crusades in an interesting spot right now. I'm pretty sure that, yeah, they're now attempting to counter-invade various locations around the world in order to basically just wrap up the war by getting it to minus 100. But unfortunately... They can't ever manage to actually do that because while they've managed to fight off any invading force, there's enough forces floating around Italy to hold them off. And speaking of which, there is... Oh, blimey. Right, the Byzantines are not kidding around. The Byzantines are absolutely launching a massive scale invasion on Italy. And at some point, they might take Rome. <laughs> okay, so Justinian is back apparently. This does raise some serious questions about whether we actually decided to target the Second Crusade correctly. I mean, yeah, the Byzantines were occupying Jerusalem. Pope wakes up one morning and goes, you know what? We should actually have a crusade to make sure that we own Jerusalem. Who owns it right now? The Byzantines do so. Ah, the Byzantines. Why does that name ring a bell? Well, they've invaded Italy, sir, and they've also occupied Rome. If you look out the window, uh, that's them. Right there. No, I get it. What you're saying is we ought to have a crusade against the Fatimids, right? No, sir. No, we should. That's right. Crusade against the Fatimids. Let's go. And apparently a learned Jewish man has appeared to the court. I wonder if this is because I'm, well, either it might be because of my high learning, or it might be because I was nice to the Jews and re was not really nice to repay the loan. <laughs> you know, I just basically fulfilled my obligations without driving them out. I suppose that's kind of nice. Or possibly because I'm part of the society I'm a part of. But he comes highly recommended in the arts of bookkeeping and administration. He strikes me as very useful indeed. So go on then. We'll have him... Uh, arrive, and he's, oh, stewardship 19, administrator, humble, temperate, yeah, I like this guy, he's more than welcome to arrive, although unfortunately we do actually have a prince of Italy already doing this job, uh, so I guess he's just sort of here, and weirdly he would also hate me if I were to put him on the council, which is fine because I've got no intention of putting him on the council really. Oh, and the keep has been built in my capital. That's got to be more troops right flipping there. Oh, yeah, that's another 300 troops. Now, Havoc wants to go and join the Knights Templar. Oh, dear. This is... I've lost two members of my family to that. Are you actually any good by any chance? Oh. Well, you have been good. You've produced... Wait, hang on. How did you only produce one child? Oh, bloody hell. I gave you such a good wife. I gave you, like, the best wife. I gave you a genius wife. And you managed to have one child with her. One child. And that child didn't... Oh, bloody hell. Right, and now she's... Bloody, you're 44 and she's 40. Right, well... I guess you're technically no good to me anymore. I guess you may as well... Oh, you've already got cancer as well. Oh, no, and she's got cancer. Oh. Maybe she got sick. Um... Yeah, go on. Off you pop. And he decides to, therefore, I assume, just, like, divorce his wife. Because now he's super holy or something. Yes, he's actually taken a vow of celibacy. Right. Did she stay at the court or is she just gone at this point? Nope, she is still at the court. Interesting. 
So I guess I could get her married again. I mean, uh, she's suffering from cancer. And she's 40. The chance of her managing to get out another child strikes me as very, very low indeed. Okay, I guess we'll just leave her be, to be honest. And I heard... Who the hell are you? Right, this is one of the children that basically came to my court after I conquered Brittany and I just wasn't able to kick out because you can't kick out children. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I kicked out her parents, right? Uh, yeah, her parents have already left for wherever Zamora is. Right, it's over there. So she's just like still here for the time being. So I feel like she shouldn't really be here. Is she any good? She's not that good. Especially as she is just now opening all my letters. So I could teach to be less nosy. That would make me cruel. That would get me intrigue up, diplomacy down, morale damage up, vassal opinion down. Honestly, that's not even that bad. And apparently it's not one of the, the deadly sins. Or she could use some practice reading. I don't want to be cruel. I want to be nice. Like, this guy's all about learning. I feel like, you know, a learned gentle scholar isn't just going to actually start punching a child in the face because she read a letter. I'm just going to sacrifice some prestige and that'll be fine. Though as soon as she actually, you know, gets of age, we will be kicking her out of the court. Ah, my wife is pregnant again. Good, let's crack on with that. Hopefully that gift of money did the job. There's some prestige. You, my good man, any chance I can also have a bit more money? No, he'd say no on this occasion. Boo. Right, I need to get this guy to like me a bit more, but I don't see an obvious way to do it. And yes, I can actually request a divorce, but he needs to like me more to allow it. I don't want to get divorced, but it's just nice to know that if the Pope does like you, it's always an option. Right, so, pregnant wife, can't get any more money, but money coming in nice and fast. So probably time for another bit of a splurge here. Yes, that leper colony, disease resistance up, that strikes me as a good idea. Yeah, keep your eye on the prize here, leper colony. Let's just get some disease resistance built up in Cornwall itself, just to make sure Cornwall is safe. And actually, for only 285, I could build a basic keep over in Devon as well. Yeah, let's get that underway. That's an extra 10% troops. It never hurts just to have uh, as many troops as possible. Oh dear. Right, illness again, fever. Okay, this is fine. I've got a good doctor. This is all under control. So he states his extensive medical experience leads him to the certain conclusion. Uh, this is the early stages of dysentery. All right, how bad is that? Because it, you know, sounds pretty bad, but maybe not as bad as some other bits and pieces. Uh, let's see if we get lucky and just sort it out earlier. And right, my steward actually managed to get himself wounded by peasants. Dear, oh dear. Okay, so a warm sour liquid will chase the other heat away. I'm glad I hired this guy. Okay. Apparently that was a good potion. Well done. Good job. And I think finally the bloody Second Crusade is nearly done. And someone is writing to me from the Secret Society. Well, it's not se is it secret? It might be secret. Dear colleague, throughout my studies I have found the most fascinating phenomena from observing the sky. I am of the firmest belief the foundation of the cosmos is hiding somewhere out there. In order to reach higher knowledge, you should take my advice and study the skies thoroughly. I'm going to guess that this is a mission, so I accept the mission, observe the sky. To complete the mission, you have to carefully study the sky and solve the puzzles that connect the physical world with the astral one. That sounds fun! Yeah, 100%. And apparently off screen, I just went and gathered instruments and tomes that I needed to actually study the stars. So a bunch of lenses, dusty old tomes written by learned people. Now I can observe the sky. Head in the clouds, monthly prestige up. Just a tiny amount, but it's not so bad. Is there actually a new event that came out of that? There doesn't seem to be. Also, what I should probably do at some point is now I'm actually a king and I've got plenty of money flowing in. I should actually like trash some of my old crappy duke gear and buy better gear from a smith. Because I could spend a lot more money on better quality stuff. Still, we're good for the moment. War taxes are still national taxes up 10%. Oh, plus 20 to a month. Love it. So publish the paper. I had a decent symptom treatment. So I do technically have a fever right now, but hopefully we can just deal with that. Head in the clouds. Very, very nice indeed. That doesn't actually have an end date. So good, good, good. Treasury. Now, I'm not sure exactly how I study the clouds any further at this point. I don't see anything around here. Uh-oh. 
Right, looks like I'm just suffering from diarrhea. That's, you know, it's not good, but it's not the worst thing either. Though it does mean my personal combat skill goes down. <laughs> yeah, I can understand that. That's reasonable. And my fertility is sadly down as well. Possibly a function of the fact my wife isn't really in the mood right now. But I'm pretty sure she's pregnant at the minute, so that's basically fine. By the way, has the old king of Denmark died yet? No, he's still around at 70 bloody six. And what is that? New important decisions. Ah! We might have something new here. Ah, seek treatment for illness. I believe the little kind of temporary treatment I did has worn off. Let's actually call up the royal physician here. He's a good egg. I'm confident he can sort this out. So, yeah, dysentery once again. We already knew about that. So, go on, my good man. He suggests you spend more time in prayer. Okay, apparently that's a good treatment. Again, maybe a slight element of placebo, but what have you. It did the job. And here we go, it would appear that, yep, one of the final few, oh, this better not be a relic. This better not be a flipping relic. Okay, no, it's not. It's something to do with the stars. So, lately my mind has been more occupied with the task of making sure the stars are in the correct places rather than that taxes are in my coffers. What is wealth compared to knowledge? Some duties can't be neglected. Right, what is wealth compared to knowledge? I become a night owl. So my prestige goes up, however, I have neglected my accounting and will have done for the next five years. Stewardship minus one, and I lose 70 gold. Stewardship minus one isn't the worst thing in the world, oh dear. Like, I was planning to become super intelligent and learned and stuff. The fact that potentially I'm actually sacrificing stewardship and money for that isn't really what I want. I mean, but it does mean my knowledge of stellar phenomena increases, which is possibly important. Screw it. Just do it. Oh, remember how I've been repeatedly saying, make sure you're always floating enough money to buy mercenaries. Well, screw that. Right, um, so my stewardship is now at 11. We'll go back up to 12 when we've sorted that out. After many a night observing the skies, I'm certain there's a pattern to the movement of celestial bodies that I've yet to uncover. However, I'm considering putting this endeavour to rest for the sake of my other duties. No, I must keep going, or enough is enough. Okay, well, how am I doing in my society ranking? I'm up to 285 right now. Interesting. And in order to level up, I'd need, what was it? Yes, yeah, 750. Okay. I'd say, keep going. Study the stars, Figure it out. You're a clever bloke. I'm worried I'm going to make myself stressed or depressed, though. And... Oh, dear. Right. Loose bloody stools. I'm definitely suffering from dysentery. So that is martial down, intrigue down, fertility way down. Health minus four is quite bad. So, yeah, basically right now my life is running between the bathroom and my telescope. So I've got to feel like that's bad for the realm of Cornwall and its general... Everything, in fact. Right, alas. Let's hope we just suffer from a normal illness. Is it going to tell me what I'm suffering from? And, oh, in comes the court physician to sort this out for me. Please sort this out for me. Okay. Several different types of treatment. My life is in your hands. Is it? I mean, am I going to die of dysentery? Hmm. I'm going to play it safe. I'm going to go for the safe treatments. And we're going to see what I do. So, uh-oh. I don't know the fact it says at the bottom I probably shouldn't have agreed to this. Oh, ill treatment. No, 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 no. A mixture of cow's dung and herbs. Right. So he's just smeared cow dung and herbs on my chest. Oh, my health is, my health is worryingly low right now. That is minus four health off dysentery and ill treatment. Minus one health, and that is for the next year. So presumably I can't actually call up a doctor for treatment. No, if I've been treated recently, not. So the game will flag when that actually comes off cooldown. Oh my. Oh flipping my. This is a concern. Also, potentially problematic thing I've just noted with England. Right now, England is allied with France. Oh, that is no good at all. Right, England is really flipping dangerous right now. What is the state of the Holy Roman Empire? Uh, because Perfect World 
It will be lovely. Oh, they're in a non-aggression pack with England as well. Right, England has done a good job locking this down. I need friends. I need friends and I need them now. And honestly, Denmark's not going to do the job. Not even close. Even if I do actually get a good relationship with Denmark. Oh, bloody hell. And Denmark is, uh, by the looks of it, in a spot of trouble themselves. Ah, uh, right now it's just a small revolt. It's not a massive deal. Okay, there's a bit of an Italian alliance going on here. Venice and Italy are friends. Now, by any chance, would you maybe be interested in... Oh, right now, of course, they're under Regency. So, my chance of being able to form an alliance is not so good. Right. Ranger... Ooh. How about you yourself? Okay, you want a, you want a better non-aggression pact. I can't blame you, to be honest. And as for Denmark, there's not much I can do with them until their old king's dead, just in case that's going to throw off everything. Right, what is the current state of Norway? This guy's 37. He's actually been king for a while. So that has stabilised a bit, but he's only got 3,000 troops under his control. The chance of him actually doing anything useful is not great. However... At this point, he is allied with Sweden, who seem to have recovered slightly. Now, a Cornish-Norwegian-Swedish three-way alliance. That wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Not at all. Ah, but I can't arrange it right now anyway, because unfortunately, it would appear that the Norwegian king's children have been imprisoned by the Scottish, who are probably around here somewhere trashing the place because you guys are at war with each other, and whenever that happens, it always seems to end up that one of you ends up coming over here and trashing all of this, and the other heads over to Norway and trashes the other. So basically, you just both badly lose. And the King of Sweden isn't interested in marrying off any of his children to me either. Okay, this is all very concerning indeed. But if I'm potentially dying, and I might be about to die of dysentery, because obviously... <laughs> Bloody Count Geralt of Rivia is going to outlive literally everyone in the cocking world. I need to make sure we've actually got someone good set up to replace me. So, who is going to be the pick? Because Margaret is old, very old, and I don't need that much instability. I could do with someone a bit younger. Right, best of a not great bunch is probably useless. So, congratulations, you slass. You just became potentially queen if I'm about to die of dysentery. So this is all just going spectacularly to plan. Who would have bloody thought that you slass would actually potentially have a good shot at becoming queen? But, oh, I've just got to survive. I've just got to survive. If I could survive until March of next year, I can seek more treatments. I mean, I've got a good doctor. Alright, I just need to survive long enough. It's dysentery, alright? It's not cancer. How dangerous is dysentery? Probably quite. And here we go. This is what I wanted to see. I just picked up a bunch of economic points from Constantinople. Let's get that castle tax up. Boom. Castle infrastructure hits level 4 and that is lovely. That is immediately lots of extra free money. And I should probably just save up some money... Because, oh yeah, we might be entering a period of instability here. Iliad has not worked out as well as I was hoping for. And I could seriously do with this flipping stupid war being over. And, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Right, matters are getting worse here. I feel a headache rising inside my skull, making it hard to pick up on different conversations in the room. Lack of sleep is clearly taking its toll on me. Shouting erupts in the room. Suddenly Hal shouts my name, bringing my consciousness back to the room. In a threatening tone, he asks if I agree. Uh-oh. 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 Oh dear. Uh, would you explain it for me again? Hal's opinion goes down. Do I care about Hal? Not so much. He's probably about to die. Or yes... In which case, yeah, I kind of need to get myself some more sleep. Maybe I should stop looking at the stars and maybe just focus on getting a good night's sleep. I feel like I've maybe let my priorities get a bit askew. And sure, sure. Oh, that would fire Alan. No, don't fire Alan. I like Alan. No, no, explain that to me again, please. I'm not firing Alan, especially not because how bloody told me to. How the bloody satanic. And after many nights of observing the stars, I've become certain... I think it's time to say that we're done. Enough is enough. I need to focus on my health. 
for a little bit. I'm starting to struggle in my day-to-day -day duties. Enough is enough. Okay. I've done a fair bit of study. Let's just get well before anything else goes horribly wrong. And my court physician wants to spend some money on a book. Alright, fine. This better actually help in some way. This better be a good book. You're a very clever man, so I'm going to assume it is. But I just cannot hold on to money right now. And Oh. Okay. I've actually managed to... Ooh. 15% chance of becoming patient. And I actually managed to successfully complete Observe the Sky. So, as a result of that... Oh, 200 knowledge. Nice. And a successful mission with those guys. Do I get patient? It's very unlikely. But... No, it would appear not. It would have shown up by now if I had. That is a shame, but I am up to flipping 500 on the old knowledge, and it's going up. Not a bad thing at all. Okay, here we go. I can summon my doctor for some more treatment. So, please, doctor, let's get the dysentery sorted before I flipping die. And my life is in your hands. Experimental treatment, as long as you know what you're doing. Okay. I mean, he's... He's really good, and he really likes me. So I could go for something experimental. I'm really worried by this. Oh, hang on. There's... No, that's that's him, not me. I'm worried by health minus four. Yeah, I'm very worried by health minus four. Please, sort it out. Oh, God, he's going to cut my face off, isn't he? Please don't cut my face off. Uh-oh. What's he actually just done? A scalpel towards my eye. I'm sorry, my lord. We must remove the root of the problem. Right. So. I've just managed to lose an eye. And I'm severely injured. Uh, but hopefully I'll recover from that. So I've had an eye cut out. But. It has indeed cured my disease. So as a result of that. And I've also picked up a daughter. Yay. I have picked up a daughter. That is lovely. And her name shall be Andromache to continue the theme. Lovely. Also, could I actually have a... Wait, what? Who did... Who did I just name? Who did... Have I had another affair? Hang on, who was that? Did I just have twins? Are these twins? Oh, they're twins. Oh, thank goodness. Right. I thought for a minute Iliad there had managed to actually, yes, have two children by two different women on the same day. Which would be embarrassing and also potentially a good romantic comedy. Right, well, the other one can be Helen in that case. Helen Andromache, who were not sisters, but, you know, they did live in the same city during the Trojan War. It'll flipping do. And twins are fun, because twins like each other, which is very, very cool indeed. Uh, right. And also, we've just got more children. Ah, Strong Lass, who is indeed strong, giving her martial abilities, uh, but also potentially a good steward. Okay, you can be good in time. Now, the big question, what is my current health situation at the minute? Severely injured is minus two to health. One-eyed does not actually cost me that, it just gives me a bit of personal combat skill down, but pagans like me more for whatever reason. And what else do we have here? Nothing else, so just minus two. And family is giving me plus to health right now, but I'm going to actually move over to hunting. I'm going to change over to hunting for the time being. I keep the health, but I also potentially get a bit more martial, which I feel like I need. And if I'm lucky, I will recover from the severe injury. I mean, I've got a good doctor, so... Live in hope. Crusade down to minus 91%. And it looks like the final few... Yeah, the final few Crusaders are being chased off right now. This has surely got to fall to minus 100 sooner or later. This Crusade has just dragged the hell on. Also, we've got an epidemic breaking out. What's going on here? That is... It's one of the blue ones. Slow fever. That one's never spread that virulently in the past. But then again... England and, yeah, Cornwall are both extremely prosperous, which increases the possibility that it's going to spread virulently. This is a concern. This could do a lot of damage. Still, on the plus side, maybe it'll finally bloody kill Geralt of Rivia. Oh no, not the white stag again. <laughs> right, you know what? Why don't you just give it a go? See if you can find the bloody white stag that John the Fat never could. Meanwhile, unfortunately, has the Pope actually... Right, the Pope has, I think, sent one last final gasp in an attempt to actually turn this crusade around. 2,000 men from the papacy have made it back to the Holy Land. 
together with a further 600 men from England. There is actually one last gasp here, but that's not gonna do anything. Though the Pope is liking me more and more. Actually, I kinda need money right now. How much does the Pope like me? And I like to look after myself and thought about my weaknesses and strengths. After many hours of soul searching, I realized uh, I have nothing to be ashamed of at all. I might become proud or I have many strengths but more weaknesses. I might become humble. Proud isn't terrible, but let's just see if I get lucky and can get humble. No, but the leper colony is ready. If there is an epidemic coming, the leper colony is flipping ready. So that's good at least. Apparently one of the courtiers has been annoying my wife Agnes. Instead of asking me for help, she took the matter into her own hands and made sure the courtier would never annoy her again. Or, oh good, or he'd know the consequences. Right, good, good. What exactly was she thinking? So... Alan's opinion of... Oh! Right, she was yelling at Alan. She did the right thing. So her opinion goes up, but Alan goes down. Yeah, you know what? Alan is on his way out. If her opinion of me stays high, hopefully that means more children. Good, and... Saddle my horse! We're going after the unfindable stag. Because I think even if we fail to find it, that's plus one marshal. And... Weirdly, um... The actual second crusade might not be quite as done as we thought. I mean, they've left it a bit late. It's at minus 98%, but a whole bunch of flipping troops from Ireland. And yeah, basically a massive Irish invasion backed up by the Pope and with a handful of English people as well has finally shown up. But it might be too late because unfortunately there's still 5,000 bloody men here. So where are you going, my good man? Are you moving into... Oh, yeah. So... That there is the main army of the Pope. So I'm going to guess as soon as this gets destroyed, which it will be, that'll be the end. And there's, hang on, that's, that's 6,000 men, including, wow, okay, you guys could have done with showing up a little bit earlier. Like, it is literally minus 99% and the Pope is being attacked. Also, what exactly do you want from me? An old letter detailing possible locations of, ooh, lost writings. If you fund an expedition, we can search for it together. Alright. Fair enough. I think we should do that. Like, I can fund that with my giant piles of money. And, oh, we've lost an old friend, unfortunately. And, uh, what do you need me to do here? So, the letter mentioned three lost texts. A local tome, Gwyneth. Okay, so these are all quite close by, I think. The further we venture in distance as well as into the past, the greater secrets we might uncover. So, we can actually go to Snassen, paying 124 gold and... Uh, oh, I'll get a giant pile of knowledge if I succeed there. However, Gwyneth is cheap, because it's close by, and it's much more likely to succeed. Uh, or, I don't have much to spare, we'll just spend 12 gold and have an 85% chance of succeeding. Let's go to Gwyneth. That's actually, you know, nice and close by. And it's not that expensive. And it's most likely to succeed. So we'll give that a go. And, oh, minus 100. Right, you guys left it way too late. Way too late. Because now, they can basically enforce actual demands on us. So I'm assuming the Second Crusade is about to fail. Because apparently everyone in the world was just sort of waiting for someone else to bother to do it. Right, after the white stag, by the way, because I'm not getting involved at this point. Unless this guy... No. Too late. You might have just been able to drag it back there, but... Too late. The crusade for Jerusalem fails. Uh, the crusade has been called off. And it is a black day. Now, what does that mean for religion? Right now, moral authority is 100%. Will it update at the beginning of next month? Let's find out. And... Oh, good. I've healed, so uh, presumably I lose severely injured, I become scarred. What does scarred do? That just gives me prestige. Okay, I think I'm completely out of the woods. And it would appear that, yeah, Catholicism is safe for now. Even though we've lost a whole bunch of stuff, for the time being, we're okay. We're okay. Catholicism isn't about to collapse or anything. Quite frankly, I'm surprised, given there's an anti-pope and we just lost a crusade. Still, this is all marvellously good news because this means that we can do what I've been wanting to do all along, which is 
Excuse me, who are you exactly? Um, hello? Who... Who are you? And who are you at war with right now? Uh, you are technically attacking... I'm not sure what you're doing over here. Are you just planning to just walk over this little ferry bridge or whatever? I guess you are. Fine. How's the old woman doing, by the way? She can actually field a thousand troops. Not exactly spectacular, is it? Right, you. I'm having you land off you, thank you. So claim that. Send that. The council obviously votes for that. Someone votes against it. Dear, of course it's Garrett of Glamorgan. Why won't you just die? Right, raise the troops. Personal levy should do the job. I don't think I need to have, like, literally everyone or anything. So you guys just all join together over there. If she bothers to actually raise her forces... We'll see. I don't think I need to bother with anything else. I think we'll be fine with just 2,000 men off here. Unless, of course... Oh! Hello? Right on the other side is... I found the white stag! You're so close, yet cannot reach it. As it runs away, you realise that you must return home without a victory. Ooh! Right! Apparently, I'm now... Oh, I'm the hunter! Marshal plus two, diplomacy plus one, pursuit plus 20%. That's... That's actually pretty good. I could take Marsh plus one, or I could take Now I Know My Purpose in Life. Right, that's... that's good. So, King Iliad the Hunter. That's... that's cool. That's very cool. I think she just hopped on the boats. Right, well that actually works for me, to be honest. So, you guys all just merge together, and all of you merge together as well, and you lot merge together as well. Wherever she goes, we'll be ready for her, and you... Get in here and take that out. I imagine she's now just heading for my territory. So we can siege out her territory with these troops. She is going to be heading north right now. So we're starting to work on that. Shouldn't take too long. I've got myself multiple big armies. Yeah, there she is. Right, looks to me like you're heading into Devon, which is fine. I'll just bring my troops around here. Make sure my morale is capped out. Your morale is quite low at the minute. I'm already besieging that. May as well just make sure all my troops are ready to uh, get involved simultaneously. Just, yeah, there's no rush here whatsoever. This is all absolutely fine. Wait for that person to hit Somerset, and then I can just bring them in both at once. This should be fine. So, all forces, yeah, now enter there, surround him. Meanwhile, we're already just besieging down that territory. In you guys go. You technically managed to make it in first. At this point, we are in... Okay, this is fine. Oh, apparently I paid money for a book and it didn't turn out to be good. Well, this is all absolutely a-okay. How is this fight going right now? Weirdly, his flank is now... <laughs> this is all very weird. Well, we seem to have absolutely destroyed him. So, that's the important thing. He has been destroyed... And the bribe we offered the priest of Gwenef was enough to make him unlock the inner chambers. Ah, yes, of course, we're heading to Gwenef. And we have actually managed to get ourselves 200 esoteric knowledge. Huzzah. We win that fight. He backs off. That's already up to 45%, which will hopefully save us time. And thus mean we actually have to do less damage over here. At this point, we should probably start breaking up some of the army. We don't need all of this. Uh, so, you two... The army that's 1,000, you can be disbanded. There we go. So just 2,000 troops will be fine just to handle the rest of this. And I can rank up in the society. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rank up. And I am up to rank two. Lovely. And here's the kid we want to keep an eye on. Priam. He's coming along well. Quick. Rowdy. Conscientious. Willful. Oh, my. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Give that kid a martial education. Let's see what he can do. This kid could be great. And there we go. I have been allowed to step up to the next level within the society. I am an initiate. Boom. You know what? I, I think I'm going to actually manage this kid personally. King Iliad, I am just going to keep an eye on you. I'm going to raise you myself. Little Priam, you are going to be spectacular. I know it. Also, Useless just left my court. Should she have done that? Why did she just do that? Useless? She works for this guy now. Why do you work for this guy now? For what possible... Right, you know what? You don't get to be flipping air anymore if you're going to do that. 
Right, you know what? I think we're out of the woods for the time being. I don't think I'm going to die imminently. I am going to bet it's going to be Priam. All right, Priam is going to do great. And you, by the way, stop them. Go and beat her up again. Bloody hell. Yep, got you outnumbered, flipping four to one. New keeps being built as well. This is all looking beautiful. And now, basically, we're just going to chop that bastard down. He's just being ridden down at this point. Another easy victory. Up to 78%. And we win the Battle of Bodmin. That gets me up to 93%. There are... Oh, blimey. This place is well guarded. 1,373 people. Okay, fascinating. Well, we're just going to have to siege them out in that case. Uh, keep an eye on that person. They might cause trouble for me yet. Oh, my mother died of cancer, which is sad, but she was 60 and I had seen she had it already, so it's not exactly surprising. Ah, but there might be a challenger for Priam yet. Hellfire has actually come good. He's ready for his education. He has got a base of six martial and he's ready for a good martial education too. Hellfire, I shall also educate you. I shall educate the most promising young men of this region myself. Because if you educate children yourself, you get more active choices in their actual development. And uh, that person's come over here. And thankfully, you've just handed me the victory nice and easily. Because that was another seven points right there. Right, off a piece. Enforce the demands, yes, and there we go. King Iliad the Hunter, that does seem pretty badass right there. Lovely. And with that, we now own, yeah, that's much more substantial. No, you can stop doing that now. You can go home, the war's over. Please stop besieging the area. Right, you guys disband. You guys naff off north, then disband. And new important decisions. Are there? I think we're fine, aren't we? I could, apparently I could hold a grand tournament. I think we're okay. I think I'm fine without that. Which one are you referring to? Hold a grand tournament. Ah, it's because I didn't have the money for it previously, I'm going to assume. And, uh, more excitingly, of course, I can actually create a new title. I could create the, ooh, the Kingdom of Britain. Apparently I can just skip the duchy, but I need the money for it, unfortunately. So yeah, the only barrier is I can't afford the 333. And someone new just arrived at my court. Hang on, be ready to just kick them straight back out again. Uh, no, you're not very good. Go away, bye. Oh, right, I think those were the people who were living in the territory I just took over, and now I've driven them away. Oh, well. So, as an initiate, what can I do that's new? I can perform scrying. So, right-click on my character's portrait in order to turn to the mystical art of divination in an attempt to foretell the future. Or, if I want to, I can swap my knowledge points for, yeah, a potion that would actually let me cure depression or stress, which is rather useful. It must be said. So, okay, let's actually try divining the future right now, if that's what I can do. And tragically, I need to... Ah, I literally need to spend my knowledge to do it, so I'd need 150. I think we should probably do that at some point. That seems kind of badass. Or I could save up for a thousand. Blimey, a thousand in order to level up. Fine, what else can I get in the future? Making a horoscope for my children. Okay intriguing. Presumably that gives them extra benefits or whatever. And then finally, Hermetic Art. So choose three different arts within the Hermetics, allowing you to decide on your lifestyle, or write a magnum opus. Ooh. Oh, this seems like a good thing to dedicate your life to right here. I'm getting smarter. And, oh yeah, the martial I like. That I flipping like right there. That is good. 15. Over 6,000 troops. The army is growing. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, we had a bit of a scare this episode. Bit of a scare, but we're out of the woods. Alright, King Iliad is okay. He's just badass now. That's all he is. He's managed to recover from his illness, but now he's super badass. Though I need to be careful. I probably shouldn't send him into battle. His personal combat skill isn't exactly spectacular. I should maybe... Actually... He's got plus one to personal combat skill off being a crusader, even though he never really fought in the crusades. He just showed up and then went home again. So, yeah, he manages to offset the one-eyed thing by being a crusader. Not the worst thing in the world. And, yeah, that hunter, that's not bad at all. I was very lucky there. So, the stag that King John the Fat could never find uh, has at last been found. We didn't kill it. Maybe it can't be killed. Maybe it's kind of an illusion. But I am the hunter. King Iliad the hunter. I like this. I like this quite a lot. 
Also, apparently I've got a couple of claims on Denmark. I can't remember where they came from, but I do. <laughs> so, you know what? Maybe we'll go and take over a bit of Denmark at some point. But for the moment, ladies and gentlemen, I think we need to focus on, uh, yeah, saving up a bit of money. All right, let's get the money in. Let's get ourselves a nice little secondary kingdom set up here. Let's just, you know, hope that this guy dies at some point. Because as soon as I've got this kingdom set up, I gain the right to actually claim these two territories uh, just in terms of de jure kingdom-y right. That will be very, very nice indeed. Uh, but then we need to start setting up some vassals. So I'll need to actually pick out people I like, people I trust, probably people from my own dynasty who I think are trustworthy. Outsider strikes me as risky. Best keeps in the dynasty if I can, but who? And also of great importance, who is actually going to turn out to be my heir? Is it going to be Priam or is it going to be one of the Hellspawn children? Because the Hellspawn children have kind of come good. We will find out all of that and probably more as well next time, ladies and gentlemen. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Crusader Kings 2. Thank you very much and goodbye. Oh no! Oh dear! America's decided they do not like us! Just want to finish off China, I can die happily. Well, not happily because there's nuclear fire involved, but moderately happily. There we go! I've just started... Oh god. The Earth was fun, wasn't it? We can all agree, the Earth was great. <laughs>